A few months ago, I traveled to Austin, Texas to train with one of the top pro pickleball players, Zane Navratil. He introduced me to three essential pickleball drills that I had not seen before. So I'm going to share those with you while showing you eight game-changing pickleball tips I learned from our session. This is the road to pro. This first drill is how Zane warms up. I absolutely love this drill and I've been doing it every session since. We're gonna warm up and we're only gonna do four dink rallies, but we're gonna play everything in the kitchen okay. and we're gonna make it like a game. Let's get it. Ready? All right, all right, all right. Everything it. in the kitchen. Here's tip number one. This is something I've questioned for a long time and I now have a good answer. Watch Zane's eyes as he hits each of these dinks. Every single shot, he is looking at the ball all the way through contact. He is completely focused on hitting the shot that's right in front of him and not so much focused on what his opponent is doing. As long as his dink is A, shallow enough in the kitchen or B, deep, but in this pressurized zone, there's a very minimal risk of getting attacked. So the only thing that matters is the dink right in front of his face. One of the worst pieces of advice you'll hear from lower level coaches is to plant your feet at the kitchen line and don't back off. That is horrible advice. Notice how Zane will often do a quick step back while turning his hips to give the ball more time to set up higher before he hits it. By doing this, he is in a better position to put more of his body weight behind the shot, which puts more pressure on me. And if we weren't just dinking here, then he would be licking his lips ready to speed up some of these balls right in my chest. Quickly stepping back off the kitchen line during a dink rally is an excellent way to generate more offensive opportunities for you and your partner. We're at 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. The last point is winner take all, the whole kitchen. We started off the net like this. All right. So I'm, it's gonna go right there. Okay. This sequence you're about to see has taught me so much about cat and mouse and singles. It's not often that you get into singles cat and mouse rallies below 5.0, but when you do, remember this. If you are unsure that your shot is going to win the rally, then just hit a simple dink down the line. It's an incredibly safe shot and you likely won't get burnt on it. But if you do hit a cross court shot and it's not placed perfectly, then all your opponent has to do is get a paddle on it and they win the point. In singles dink rallies, straight on is so much safer. Do you train more from transition or baseline? When I'm like starting my warm up, I kind of like go quickly through this, but then I usually do like a, a transition drill and we can do that too. But before we show that transition drill, here's a bonus drill that I know you've done before, but Zane dropped some awesome knowledge. During this drill, one person is at the baseline hitting cross court drops, while the other person is at the kitchen hitting the ball back. I know we weren't going for very long there, but you were definitely just aiming for short corner as much as possible there, right? Just to kind yeah. of dial it in. Yeah, well, I like that because like generally in doubles, you're not really dropping straight ahead of you. You're almost always dropping to the middle or cross court. Okay. Did you catch that? Tip number four, in doubles, you generally want to hit your drops cross court instead of straight on. There are several reasons why, but the most basic is that hitting a cross court angle allows your ball more space to dip over the net because there's more distance between the center of the net and the corner than there is from the edge of the net to the corner. Plus the net is two inches higher on the side. And then also this is, really good for singles because it's going to work my my backhand down the line it's going to work my backhand roll cross court it'll work my forehand down the line and it'll work my forehand cross court so it's good doubles and singles drill to do that's good because like you almost net you really infrequently have somebody return straight ahead and then you take that third right back to them. It's not like a normal pattern that you have in pickleball. In transition, when you're just resetting, it seems like most people tend to reset straight ahead, but I feel like there's probably a benefit to resetting cross court to give yourself more time and more of an angle. Do you think about that at all and just like general resets from transition? Yeah, well, there's cross court is, is problematic too because if you really try to reset cross court, Generally, your partner is probably gonna be a little bit in front of you when you're in the transition zone. If I hit it up too high, I'm laying my partner out to dry. There might be a little bit more margin, but there's also like, if I mess up that shot, my partner's in trouble. Yeah. I guess when I'm resetting, I'm just going generally to the middle. Tip five, reset to the middle. If you reset straight ahead, there is less room. If you reset cross court, you run the risk of getting your partner in trouble. But if you reset to the middle, then the net is a bit lower and you're not putting your partner or yourself in a compromised position. We'll do, we'll do one of my favorite mid-court drills. One person starts at the kitchen line 
the other starts in the midcourt. So if our score is 0-0, zero, zero, we'd be playing here. If our score is 0-1, we'd be playing here. Yep. You play the box based on your score. I start right here, and I feed basically a mediocre drive. Got I feed a mediocre drive and then it's game on. And this simulates basically like your partner has hit a, a drive, you're caught in the midcourt, what do you do? After I hit this drive, I can move forward, I can move back, I'm just trying to win the point. Here's tip number six. When you get the chance to drill, the best thing you can do is put yourself in a position that simulates a real game. So often I see people one hour into a drilling session just hitting 50 easy dinks back and forth. That is so unrealistic and accomplishes next to nothing. The pros practice drills that emulate real game situations so that when they are in those real game situations, they can rely on their muscle memory. You don't rise to the level of your expectations, you fall to the level of your training. I lost the footage here, but Zane calls this the ultimate singles drill. I'll take one side of my half and Zane has to hit every ball to that side. But I, being the inferior player today, get to use the entire court. If Zane gets to seven, then he wins. If I get to 11, then I win. But here's the twist. It's ground strokes only. We have to stay back and hit drives the entire time. This is an advanced tip on your ground strokes. Watch how Zane hits his forehand on shots where I pull him wide. He plants his outside foot, then after making contact, he steps with his left foot and then pushes off his right foot, getting him quickly back into the court. Here's what you shouldn't do. Plant hard on your outside foot and try to stop your momentum while hitting the shot. This will make you depressed like this guy. This guy is me. I'm not depressed. Final tip, watch Zane's footwork on his two-handed backhands or slice backhands. Often on his backhand, he'll cross over with his right foot. Obviously, this is a more comfortable way to hit a backhand because you're not having to reach across your left hip, but this can really hurt you if you don't do like Zane does here. The most important part of the stroke is that the millisecond after he finishes it, his feet pop back to being split stepped and he's ready for the next ball every single time. If you want more tips like this on a weekly basis, then subscribe to my Road to Pro newsletter at SheaUnderwood.com. This year is entirely focused on going pro and we're only getting started. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. You want to point to your channel name above your head? Zane Navratil Pickleball, everybody. All right, remember to unsubscribe and just like the video. See you in the next one. Go give Chris Olsen one star. Go log a match <laughs> against Chris Olsen and say you beat him 11 to 1 in Duper. Go do that. Or just go beat him 11 to 1. Yeah, either one. Probably easier to do that. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs>